consider the kinematics of motion, we actually thought about these three terms. Okay, angular displacement, theta, it is defined as the arc length over the radius. Then we also move on to angular velocity, which is your omega. It is defined as the uh, angular displacement over time. Okay, and we say that for one complete circle, theta is 2 pi, the time taken is the period t. Then t is linked to your frequency, so we also end up with the formula 2 pi f. Okay, so these are important formulas for your angular velocity. Then we also derive the equation V equals to R omega. So this is what we have done. Okay, the next thing we are look at, going to look at is acceleration. Is an object going round in a circle accelerating? Okay, so we are going to look at an object that is moving at constant speed. So we are doing uniform circular motion, meaning constant speed. So let's imagine that the object is at point A and the velocity is VA. Okay, the speed is V, the direction is AC, and that is at time t equals zero. Okay, sometime later, delta t, the final velocity, right, will be having the same magnitude, which is V, but the direction now is in the direction as shown in the diagram, V to D. So there is a change in the velocity. Okay, so is the object accelerating? Okay, recall the definition for acceleration. It is defined as the rate of change of velocity. So since the velocity is changing respect to time, the answer to this question is, yes, it is accelerating because velocity is changing. So the next thing we are going to do is we are going to find an expression for acceleration. Okay, we start off with the uh, definition. Acceleration is defined as the rate of change of velocity. So we have change in V over change in T. So now the problem reduced to finding what is the change in V. Uh, this one you have to recall a uh, vector addition. Okay, to find the change in V, I take the uh, final velocity, which is VB, minus the initial velocity, which is VA. Okay, look at the screen carefully. Yeah? I'm going to explain to you uh, how I get the equation. So first thing I'm going to do is, I'm going to extend the vector, okay, VB. Can you see the dotted line? What is the angle between the two vectors VA and VB? <coughs> Firstly, you know this angle is theta. And what is this angle that is directly opposite it? Two pi minus theta or pi minus theta? Pi minus theta, right? And then, what is this angle? This angle will be theta. Okay, so by geometry, you should be able to work out that angle theta. Then the next thing we need to do is to draw a vector diagram to find what is the change in velocity. So I'm going to uh, shift the vector VB. Okay, so this is the final velocity. Shift the initial velocity VA. But I want minus, so what should I do? Change direction, so I'm going to flip it. So this is my minus VA. Okay, so what I'm doing is I'm drawing the vector diagram for the change in velocity, which is the final velocity VB minus the initial velocity, and the resultant will be given by you join the head to the tail, or, or tail, sorry, tail to the head. Okay, so you end up with delta V. So that is the change in velocity. Okay, the direction for your acceleration will be the same as that of the uh, change in velocity. And if you were to uh, draw the diagram, okay, to scale, you see that this change in velocity is always directed to the center of the circle. Okay, right now I'd like you to uh, consider something that you are familiar with. Consider a sector. We know that the arc length will be equal to r, which is the radius of the sector, multiplied by the angular displacement, which is theta. If the angle is very small, what can you say about the arc length s? it will be approximately a straight line. Okay, so for small angle, the arc length is almost a straight line. Now, I'm going to compare this with the vector diagram. Okay, so similarly for your vector diagram, if the angular displacement is very small, remember in the vector diagram, we have the velocity uh, VA and VB, they have the same magnitude, so that is like the radius. Okay, then the change in velocity, which is opposite to the angle here, that is your delta V. 
So an expression for your delta V will be R theta, where R here is the velocity, is the speed V. Okay, then multiply by the angle theta. So with that, I obtain the expression for change in velocity. Okay, so your acceleration, right, is change in velocity over time. Change in velocity, we obtain the expression is V theta. Okay, because it's similar to uh, the arc length, right? Where the arc length S equals to R theta. Here, I compare the triangle, so the arc length is replaced by delta V, where the R is the speed V. Okay, so you end up with V that theta over delta T. And after that, I'm going to simplify further. So my A in this case will be V theta over delta T. Angular displacement over time is defined as angular velocity. Okay, and this will give me V omega. But we also learned previously that your V equals to R omega in the previous chapter, so we sub in. So your A can also be expressed in terms of R omega squared or V squared over R. So these are the three different forms for your acceleration. Dependent on what is given to you, you use the uh, correct equation accordingly. Okay, so if they give you uh, linear velocity and they give you radius and ask you to find A, of course you use V squared over R and so far so on. Okay, with that we are ready to do some example. Okay, we'll start with work example three. I'll give you some time. Okay, in part one you're asked to find the angular speed. This is... Um, something that we learned in first lecture. B, linear speed, also from first lecture. C, acceleration. Okay, we just learned the formula, so we apply it here. So I'm going to give you two minutes. We start now. Different, and you are expected to know the 
Yeah. Okay, so from here we get omega. Anyone has any question? Those who are talking, yes? Ah, uh, yes. Okay. It takes one day for the Earth to rotate about its own axis. Any other question? If not, why are you talking? Yes, that role, the guy there talking. Do you have a question? Yeah, what's your question? <laughs> you are expected to bring calculator as a science student every day. I just want to share this with you. Uh, during exam time, right, it's very frustrating when you know students get everything correct, concept correct, substitution correct, but final answer wrong. Why? See, right? Yeah. Every year they are wrong like that. Why? Because lack of practice in pressing completely. You always ask your friends for answer. Then when you come to exam time, you press wrong. Okay, so I would seriously urge you to practice pressing completely. Huh? So the equation, the concept that we need to recall, V equals to R omega. Okay, so uh, we have R, we have omega obtained from part A. Of course, the omega that you sub in here, you can put a uh, 4, 5, and 7, it doesn't matter. Okay, uh, the more the value actually, because it's the intermediate percent. And then the final answer is about 470. Okay, so are uh, are you all moving? We are all on earth. We are all men on earth. Are we all moving? Yeah, you look at our speed. Four seven oh meters per second. For a car that is moving at a speed, top speed uh, of eighty kilometers per hour, that is only approximately twenty meters per second. We are moving at four hundred and seventy meters per second. It's okay if you know how fast we are moving together with the earth. Just that relative to the earth, we are moving. But if you are looking from outer space, right, we are all actually moving like this. Very fast. Okay, let's move on to part C. Any question? If no question, I don't want you to talk, please. It's very noisy. Okay. Okay, part C also find acceleration. Here I choose to use V omega because I have V I have omega. But if you want to use V squared over R or R omega squared, doesn't matter. Okay? Or alright. So from here if you substitute in, you should end up with the answer. 3.4 now stand about minus 2 meters per second. Okay, so all of us are having this acceleration. Okay, so for any object that is going round in circular motion, you can find the acceleration by using uh, one of the formulas that we just derived. Yes, why so noisy again? If you have a question, you put out your hand. Otherwise, if I didn't ask you to talk, can you don't talk? thing that we are going to look at is the resultant force. So we know that for an object that is going around the circle, it is accelerating. What about the resultant force for the object? So again, we are going to consider an object moving in uniform circular motion. From Newton's first law, we know that the resultant force is not zero. Why? Because the direction is changing. If the direction is changing, you need a force. Therefore, F is not equal to zero. Then what is the F? Well, from Newton's second law, we know that F equals to MA, where M is the mass of the object. Do you have A? Yes, we just derived the A. So with that, right, I would like you to complete um, the page, whereby you have to find the expression for F. Where do you find it? Page one. 
My birthday? What page is that? Uh? What page is that? Eight. Okay, thank you. Can you open the page eight? There's a blank for you to fill in your answer. So right there, what I want you to do is to derive the expression for the resultant force F using Newton's second law, F equals to MA. Okay, so you start from F equals to MA, give me an expression for the uh, resultant force. In terms of the uh, linear speed, the radius, or the angular velocity. Okay, should be very fast. Okay, this is what you should have gotten. So from Newton's second law, for any object that is going round in similar motion, we know that F equals to F A. Okay, A we derived previously is V2 over R, or R omega squared, or V omega, but V omega will sell it. Okay, so most of the time we use M V2 over R, or M R omega squared. So this is the expression for centrifugal force, or the resultant force, of an object that is going around in circle. That resultant force has a special name. It is called the centripetal force because it's always directed to the center of the circle. Okay, let's take a look at uh, this resultant force, which is called the centripetal force. Uh, the Centripetal force is always directed to the center of the circle. In fact, the word centripetal means center seeking. So it's always directed to the center of the circle. Why is it always directed to the center of the circle? Because F goes to MA. Okay, F goes to MA, so the direction for the uh, F, the resultant force, will be the same as that of the acceleration. Okay, the directional acceleration is the same as that of the change in the velocity. So it's directed towards the center of the support. Okay, the, the okay, as I mentioned, the force is directed towards the center of the circle. Another reason is, of, of course, uh, because we need to have uniform circular motion, that is the speed is constant. So the force should not have any component in the direction of your V. So it must be perpendicular. So it's directed towards the center of the circle. Okay, so the force is perpendicular to a velocity V because the speed is constant. Okay, this uh, resultant force, right, F is not a real force. This F is centripetal force. It's the result of the resultant force. That means all the forces acting on the object. Okay, that gives rise to the uh, resultant force, which is called the centripetal force. So when you draw free body diagram, you cannot label centripetal force as a real force acting on the object because it's not a force, a real force. It is the resultant force. Okay, just that uh, when we do a circular motion, we call this resultant force the centripetal force, but otherwise you can call it resultant force. The magnitude of uh, F must be constant. Again, because it's uniform circular motion, and we call F equals to mv squared over R, right? So if the speed is constant, mv squared over R must be constant. So the magnitude of the force must be constant. But is, force, is this force a constant? No, because the direction is changing. Okay? So it has a constant magnitude, but not a constant direction. So F is changing. And one interesting fact about this centripetal uh, force is that it does no work on the object. Why? Because work done is defined as the force times the distance move in the direction of the force. If you take a look at the distance move, what is the distance move? It's along the circumference. So if you look at the displacement, it is always perpendicular to the force. Therefore, what is the work done? Zero because there is no um, displacement in the direction of the force. The force is perpendicular to the displacement. Okay, so with that, right, I actually completed the concepts, all the concepts that you need to know for circular motion. So now, we take a look at how are we going to use the concepts to answer the first challenge. Challenge one. Okay, uh, we have the balls and the tail in the upside-down position when it's at the highest point. 
So why is it that the ball does not drop when going in a circular motion? Because to go in a circular motion, a force is needed for the balls to change velocity. Right? For a object going around in a circular motion, the direction is changing all the time. So you need force to do that. Where does this force come from? It comes from the weight and the normal reaction. So the weight plus the normal reaction, these two forces, they are used to change the velocity. So these two provide the centripetal force. So as long as it's going around in a circle, these two forces, the weight and the normal reaction, will be used up. Use up to what? Use up to change the velocity. That's why uh, it will not put the ball down. So to make sure that uh, things defy gravity, uh, what you need to do is to make sure it go around in a circle. Okay, let's take a look at the challenge two. Okay, how do you actually uh, lift the marble? With the wine glass inverted, so what you need to do is you need to uh, spin, okay, make the ball go in a circular motion. So why is it like that? Uh, same thing. If you consider forces acting on the uh, marble, we have the weight mg. Uh, marble in contact with the surface of the wine glass, so there will be a normal reaction force. What provides the centripetal force here? The centripetal force. Is directed towards the center of the circle, there is only one force here that is a normal reaction. So the normal reaction here actually provides a centripetal force. Okay, then you have another force which is friction. Uh, friction is actually dependent on the normal reaction force. Okay, so the moment the uh, bubble is spinning in the circle, there will be a normal reaction force because you need that for your centripetal force. So if you spin faster, the normal reaction force will get bigger. If the normal reaction force gets bigger, the friction will also increase. So as a result, when the friction is more than the weight, the marble gets bigger. And so that is the idea behind it. Okay, so uh, right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a summary of all the learning outcomes that you find on page one. Okay, so if you like, uh, you can copy this on page one. Okay, this will uh, summarize all the concepts that you need to know and after that we'll be looking at past year exam questions. So there are two components here. The first one is to consider the language of circular motion. We call it the kinematics of circular motion. So we learn about angular displacement theta. Okay, we learn about angular velocity omega. We also learn about tangential velocity. V. And then we actually relate to acceleration. We derive this formula A equals to B squared over R or R omega squared. What causes the acceleration? From Newton's second law, we know that it is the resultant force. This resultant force has a special name. What is the name? Centripetal force. Yes. So it is the centripetal force that actually causes the acceleration. From the acceleration, uh, you can find your so you can work backwards. You can find your linear velocity, you can find your angular velocity, as well as your angular displacement. So, then the question is, how do you find centripetal force, the result force? That is very important. The one I didn't cover here, because you have done it previously. You must. How to find resultant force? Resolve vector. Before you can resolve vector, you must draw free body diagram. So this is what you have done under forces. Okay, so you must know free body diagram. Then you must recall dynamics. Let's say F equals to F A. You learn centripetal so that you can come up with the expression for centripetal force. In fact, with this, right, I'm also going to review what is the strategy when you do circular motion. You always start with free body diagram. Then you go and find the centripetal force. After that, you go and work out the acceleration and all the others that you are expected to find. Okay, so with that, I would like you to um, try the next work example using uh, these concepts that I've highlighted here. If you are not too sure what to do, the first step is draw three body diagram. Okay, I'll give you two 
minutes uh, for work example for For this question, bear in mind, uh, it is not in equilibrium. There must be a resultant force that is towards the center of the circle. So you must first identify where is the circle. Okay, draw the circle first. Then you know where the radius is. And you know where is the direction of the resultant force. So what you're given here is the speed of the train and you're told that it's constant. You're asked to find the radius in part A and part B, uh, what direction is the train turning? Now what I say for circular motion, if you don't know what to do, the first thing is geography body level. Okay, so if you consider the pendulum rock, there should be two forces. One will be the tension T and the other will be the weight. Okay, by the way, if you are asked to draw free body diagram in, in exam, right, you cannot just label T. You need to explain what your T is. If you don't explain, uh, it will be marked wrong. Okay, so you must explain tension T. And then the other one is the weight. And uh, we need to resolve, right? So if you resolve forces vertically, is the pendulum not moving up and down? No, right? So in vertical equilibrium. If it's in vertical equilibrium, that means the upward component of the tension T must be equal to the weight. So I have mg to be equal to T cosine 40. So that is equation 1. What about horizontally? Is it in equilibrium? No. Horizontally, it is going around in a circle, right? So horizontally, there must be a resultant force. In fact, if you take a look at the diagram, there is only one horizontal force, which is the component of T. So this is T sine 40. What does T sine 40 do? It actually provides the centripetal force that is required to change the direction of the pendulum bob so that it can go in a circular motion. Okay, so the 
a balanced horizontal force, T sine 40. In this case, it's a resultant force. And the resultant force is mv squared over r, which is a centrifugal force. Okay, so that is the resultant force. Vertical forces cancel off. So what's left will be just the horizontal force. So with equation 1 and 2, uh, now you move on to find the radius. I give you some time for you to solve these two equations to find the radius of this circle. of the T and to do that not by substitution but rather by division okay so I take two equation two divided by equation one then you see that um, the mass will be gone okay the T also gone then instead of sine and cosine I get tangent tangent 40 okay so to tangent angle the radius will be equal to this square over R okay so the radius which I want to find D is given and G is 9.81 so the only unknown here is R. Okay, but be very careful because the speed given uh, is not in meter per second. Uh, it's not SI unit. So you need to convert to meter per second. Okay, so now we add your R is 60 meters. Okay, so you add your R is 60 meters. Okay, if you ask me in the exam, how many marks? Uh, three marks. One mark for equation one, one mark for equation two, one mark for the final answer. <coughs> then what is the direction that it is turning? The direction that is turning should be in the direction of the resultant force. When the object moves in the direction of the resultant force. In this case, uh, it should be turning to the to the right. Yes. Okay. If you were to uh, draw a vector diagram, you will see that the resultant force, right, is horizontally to the right. If you draw to scale, okay. So the train is turning right because the center of the circle is on the right side. So there are two ways that you can deduce uh, where the train is turning. One is to draw a vector diagram, find the direction of the resultant force. Uh, number two is easier. Draw the circle. Where the center of the circle is, okay, is where the force is directed. Because centripetal means center sitting. So the resultant force will always be pointing towards the center of the circle. So that will be the direction that the train will be turning. Okay, with that, we're done with example 4. Now we move on to work example 5. Okay, here um, there is a new term. Uh, in this question, you are given an airplane. The mass is 2,000 kg. Flying in a horizontal circle. Radius is given 3 km. Okay, speed of the plane is given 200 meters per second. In part A, 
you're asked to calculate the angle of banking. Okay, in circular motion, can you highlight this term, angle of banking? This word banking come up very frequently. Okay, so you must know what is the meaning of banking. I'm defining it for you here. Okay, in the question. I actually inserted the one in blue myself. Wait, in the exam question, it is not explained to you what is banking angle. So you need to know what is the meaning of banking angle. So next time when you are given the angle of banking, okay, what does it mean? It means the angle between the aeroplane vertical axis and the earth vertical axis. Okay, for example, if I ask you, what is my banking angle now? My vertical axis is here, right? Vertical axis of the earth is also here, so banking angle is zero. What happens if I tilt sideways? Then my vertical axis become here, and the vertical axis of the earth is here, so there will be an angle. Okay, so that is the meaning of banking angle. Okay, so in A, you're asked to find the angle, and then in B, you're asked to find the lift force. Okay, to turn at this. Resultant force is actually L sine theta. So the L sine theta is the unbalanced force. It provides you the centrifugal force. So you equate to mv squared over r. Okay, so same thing. We end up with two equations. The unknown here is theta. How do you solve it? I'm going to give you some time. Okay, find angle theta. And then I'm going to ask you for answer. Yeah. 
Anyone got, got the answer for Peter? <coughs> the anger theta. Make theta the subject. Eh? L the subject. I don't make L the subject. What's the fastest approach? Ah, two divided by one. See, same strategy. Even the method of solving is the same. Okay, so you take two divided by one and then you end up with tangent theta equals to V square over RG. In fact, it's the same equation, right? As in example four. So you have the V you have the radius, uh, but make sure everything is in SI unit, and then you get the angle theta, 53.7. Okay, part B, you're asked to find the lift. How to find the lift? You sub this theta back into which equation? If you want to find the lift. Okay, you can sub into equation 1. So sub theta equals to 53.7. Uh, the lift is the only unknown, so you get the answer. Okay, so we'll stop here. Next lecture, I'll do 6-7. Uh, I will also go into your tutorial. Okay, so I'll like you to bring your circular motion tutorial and I will be able to finish the first four questions at least. Okay, so please do your circular motion to down here.